Okay, so uh, hi, my name is Tobias Henkel. I'm uh, working for BMW and uh, today I want to talk about uh, why we are using Zool and also how we are using Zool at scale. Um, can you please forward one? Okay, so um, this talk is, uh, the focus of this talk is uh, we are doing a uh, One, two, three. I think it works now. Okay. Yeah, it works. It works. Okay. So um, the focus of this talk today is um, focus to automotive software development for software in the car. Um, as uh, but. BMW is also uh, developing software for many different uh, in very, very many different areas, uh, such as, for example, backend mobility services, or also financial services. Uh, um, but the focus of this talk is uh, regarding automotive software development for software, which basically runs in the car mostly. So. Um, to, to, uh, for start, I'll just outline a bit uh, of the history of uh, the automotive software development. I guess most of you had already were already at the, at the keynote, so maybe I'll do that a bit quicker. Um, so at the first, um, there were only small independent ECUs, um, and they also were just running small soft small pieces of software. Uh, However, they still had to fulfill uh, very high safety standards uh, because, for example, it's very critical that an anti-lock braking system does what it's supposed to do. Otherwise, bad things can happen. Um, for this, automated testing uh, is crucial for the entire development uh, process. Um, back in, the, in these times, um, small CI systems were sufficient and a uh, typical setup was uh, Jenkins space, for example, with a few build slaves. Um, then the existing features evolved, and uh, many new complex features were introduced, and that also leads to a massive amount of, co of new code and new uh, ECUs in the car, and also um, this also needs uh, much uh, bigger uh, CI systems. Um, a typical setup in, in this area was, uh, for example, a Jenkins with more bit slaves, uh, but uh, most of the time we had several Jenkins instances uh, because we had more uh, projects to run it in parallel. Um, the software that is now, now running in the car, it's much more complex. Um, software is now everywhere, ranging from window lifters up to uh, infotainment systems uh, and also the code size has increased dramatically which also requires um, a massive uh, increment in, in the uh, continuous integration systems. Also what's also very challenging about that is um, that we, had, we need uh, cooperations between many internal and uh, external teams and for, for this for this uh, to be able to manage that, uh, also automation is uh, not only crucial for the software quality, but also for running the software development process itself. For example, for creating and distributing releases. So a typical setup was uh, Jenkins Multimaster setup uh, with many build slaves, for, uh, for example. But we also uh, are running for certain smaller projects already since four years, uh, Zool-based uh, CI systems, uh, and we're also um, an early adopter in that area outside of the uh, OpenStack ecosystem. And we also were among the first users that switched to the new Zool v version 3, um, that even was, uh, even before it was released. So now we are developing the software of the future cars, um, and for this we have to drive many large projects in parallel. 
Um, these require cooperations with many suppliers and uh, teams, and uh, this also now covers not only onboard but also offboard software. Um, automotive software is one uh, is just one example for that. So developing auto, uh, autonomous driving is uh, very challenging. It's a, it is a huge effort, and also. It needs a highly complex software stack. For this, obviously, safety is a must, and we also have an excessive need, for example, for, uh, for simulation, because we cannot just rely on unit tests, system tests, integration tests, and manual test drives. That is just not enough. We had to simulate millions of kilometers to be really sure that this also works. And uh, in order to drive this, we need a large-scale CI system, and that is Zool. So we are using Zool now also for our large projects. It is already in use, um, and it is in use by international development teams and partners, um, and enables our uh, software development process. Um, one key feature of Zool is that it uh, scales its resources uh, horizontally. So uh, when the, while the uh, projects grow, we can just add more cloud resources to the system and so we can just use more, more resources and so we can support more developers. But this is not uh, the most important feature in Zool. So the most important feature in Zool, in my eyes, is uh, the project gating feature of Zool. So, this is the key for not just only scaling the software, uh, the compute resources of the CI system, but also it is the key for uh, scaling the development teams themselves. So without gating, um, there's often a process uh, called stop and fix. So when, when the build is red, everyone has to stop and fix the build and until the build is green. and when, uh, when you scale your development teams, that obviously becomes a major pain point. And so many big projects tend to um, then just ignore the red build and just merge their features as quickly as possible. And then this uh, needs an additional regular uh, fix the build day or in larger projects even weeks. And this is also this also has its problems, and uh, leveraging automated gating with Zool can also just prevent breaking the build up front, and uh, so also uh, improve the development process itself dramatically. Further, um, Zool is a great open source project with a very helpful community, and we're extremely part of being pro uh, proud of being an active part of that. So how, how does Zool fit into our existing environment? So one of our um, requirements is that we need to separate the projects from each other. So we, uh, we work together with many OEMs and suppliers and we have many different projects and uh, from, from a company point of view, we need to separate these projects with, uh, so the, they cannot interfere with each, each other and they, they cannot see each other. So this is a hard requirement for us and luckily um, Zool has a built-in tenant support which per, is a perfect match for this. So further, we are using GitHub for development. Um, so we're so the, the choice to GitHub was because uh, many developers out there are uh, also working on open source co components, for example, and there most of the developers uh, also are familiar with GitHub. So um, that's the reason why we chose GitHub. Um, and uh, Zool supports GitHub and we also contributed uh, many changes to improve the support for GitHub. So further, um, configuration as code is one of the principles which is very important for us. So um, 
we not only want to, uh, to version the, the projects themselves, but also the configuration to build these projects, also the jobs and so on. Um, that is very important also to, when it comes to traceability, for example. So in, in, uh, in the automotive software development, you typically have need to be able to trace every single change of a specific project to up to via some systems uh, up to the requirement, for example. And uh, this not only applies to the code itself, but also to the build system, because you have to reproduce, you have to be able to reproduce uh, the build at that time, for example. And for this, we need configuration as code, and that is one of the key principles how SUL works. SUL is a Git-driven system, so that is also a perfect match. Um, further, um, we don't want to run many SULs for many projects, uh, but we want to run one centralized SUL for all, for all projects because um, that brings down the uh, maintenance over overhead, for example. Um, but this comes at a cost because now when we're uh, running a centralized tool, it is uh, it has had has an, an high impact if this, if tool goes down, for example, for a few hours. Um, that that would cause several hundreds of developers uh, being not able to work, and that is bad. So, what uh, we have uh, so our requirements is that we need to ensure um, uh, an, as high uptime as possible of the CI system. And uh, for this, SUL is a great fit because uh, most components of SUL are scale out, and therefore, um, therefore they just can tolerate failures of specific components. There's only one component left in in SUL that is um, not scale out yet. Um, that is the SUL scheduler, but uh, it's at least on the roadmap to make this a scale out component. So further, also regarding uh, availability, uh, multi-cloud support. So we want to use cloud computing uh, to, you, uh, to distribute uh, the build resources. So, um, but as we have uh, the high requirements to, to, uh, to the availability, um, we also need to distribute the load over multiple clouds. And this is just natively supported by Zool, so this is also a great fit. So, what's our approach to, to run the CI system? So, there's not only technical stuff around that, but also process and organizational topics here. Um, so, we at BMW, we have a dedicated team of CI developers, both on, on the infrastructure running Zool and also in the individual projects. So we have uh, a team that runs the, the CI, CI infrastructure and we have uh, in each project also a, t a team that also uh, that is mainly responsible for doing the jobs. Um, this is also um, this is important so we can have uh, uh, a couple of people who have the best knowledge of how to design the jobs, for example, because uh, when we have these big projects, it really matters how you design the jobs to not uh, bring down the system because you download uh, five gigabyte per job, for example, every time, and that's with a parallel uh, that with 100 jobs in parallel. So that's gonna not gonna work. So uh, we need people who know what they're doing uh, that design also the jobs. Um, further, we are building up a CI community uh, in-house. So we're, we're starting with, uh, with our infrastructure team and our project support team and uh, also we're the projects them, themselves, at least the key users, are part of the CI community and we also have a uh, dedicated chat, uh, gr uh, group chat, for example, for that so uh, the community can uh, talk to each other and yeah, give best practices or ask questions. So. Uh, not every question has to be answered by by us who run the CI infrastructure. So 
as already I mentioned, uh, we have one centrally CI hosted CI system uh, with a large amount of cloud resources um, because we want to, to have uh, at least uh, the, the maintenance cost in, uh, to bring down. Um, and the most, uh, uh, the most important advantage of that is that we have shared resources for all projects. So we have not just little resources for that project and a bit higher resources for that project, but they are just shared. So in, in peak times, each project could, in theory, use all resources that are available. Um, the, what's, but uh, with that uh, approach, it is still important uh, to have enough resources for all. So, uh, with, uh, so it can be a problem with uh, if many projects use much resources and you don't have resources for all. So that, that is a problem and this is also a challenge. Um, but I think that is, if, you, uh, if you can resolve that, so the, if you can uh, manage to, to, every t uh, to have enough resources every time, this is a win-win situa uh, situation for everyone. And uh, further, um, we're following an upstream first open source strategy. So we're running Zool from ahead of master, to be fair, uh, but every single patch we run in our Zool is already in review upstream before I take it into our Zool. So every, uh, so this is, I think, one of the most important uh, parts when it comes to using open source projects. Yeah, you, you need to contribute back, and if you need patches to, uh, for your, uh, to run, then contribute the patches back. That is the most important thing uh, when it comes to, to using open source projects in my eyes. So what is our technical setup? Um, obviously, we have a Zool, and we have a node pool. So, uh, node pool is a component that manages uh, manages uh, the build resources, and this is a run, running op OpenStack, of course. Um, but it's not only running on OpenStack. So, because of the, our uh, Requirements to availability, we run Zool and NodePool uh, on top of OpenShift, which is a distribution of Kubernetes. Um, this has some, some advantages for us. So we can, so OpenShift has uh, some self-healing capabilities, health checks, liveness probes, and all this kind of stuff, which, for example, if, if a component of Zool fails or crashes, then it's just automatically restarted on a different node. So uh, even if, if a whole VM then crashes, for example, and takes some, some Zool services with, uh, with it, then it's just rebalanced to a different node and the system is restored. Um, this, work, this would work perfectly if we would have the scale out scheduler. So the, the Zool scheduler is the only component that loses its state if that, uh, that occurs, but uh, this is still to be fixed. So also, um, what is important for us, and I think for all of you uh, who want to run uh, Zool on, on OpenStack, is uh, that you should separate the, ten, the control plane and the build resources where NodePool operates in uh, into different tenants. So that I th uh, that is very important to do that because uh, NodePool also has some cleanup functionality, which usually uh, works almost per works perfectly, but. As it is software, there is a small risk that this might be misbehaving, and if, and I guess uh, no one wants his control plane to be cleaned up by NodePool because the VMs are leaked. So, just be safe. Uh, better safe than sorry. So, um, just uh, let workpool, uh, let NodePool work in a different tenant. Also, NodePool has support for static nodes, which is important for us because uh, we have uh, several use cases for static nodes. For example, 
we are testing our, our software on, on hardware racks and um, this obviously cannot be done in a virtualized manner so uh, this is also a good feature for us so we can do real hardware testing with together with Notepool. Also we have uh, the GitHub which is uh, so it so connects to GitHub um, and just reacts on, on the pull requests similar to Garrett. Also, we are using the Zool Jobs repository, um, uh, mainly currently for, for the base jobs and some, some minor stuff, but we are planning to use uh, Zool Jobs much more than we are currently doing. Um, and we have a similar repository, we, can, we name it uh, CILib. Um, which is our internal Zool Jobs repository where we have uh, Zool Jobs and Ansible roles, for example, that are shared between uh, all our different projects. And this CI library is also part of every Zool tenant we have. Um, we also uh, use it to develop functionality independent of Zool Jobs, and uh, we are also looking into. Uh, which parts of uh, the CI library is being able to be upstream to Zool jobs. So actually, this should be a, um, a deployment specific or BMW specific uh, collection of, of jobs and roles and uh, what's interesting for everyone, uh, we, we, should, we will upstream also to Zool jobs. Also, uh, we don't even uh, don't uh, ha only have Git and and GitHub, but um, we also need to uh, have a binary store, for example, build dependencies. We still have we also have problems that that needs uh, that have binary dependencies and uh, binary deliveries, for example, from from some OEMs. So we uh, store that in Artifactory. Also, we're using that as a mirror, for example, to not have to download everything from the internet. And I'd like to share some of our users' feedback. So um, this is half a year ago, um, where, the f uh, where uh, when we uh, uh, when we activated the first projects for Sewell, and uh, the first, our first users then uh, used Zool for the first time. So um, many users at first were a bit skeptical because they didn't know this concept of automated gating. Uh, and for us, uh, because they just knew, for example, Jenkins and clicking the jobs together and so on. And there's a there's a huge mind ch uh, mindset change that is uh, necessary to switch from an clicking jobs together on Jenkins to a Git-driven system with Zool and automated gating. So um, they were a bit skeptical about that, but um, after just one or two weeks of using that, they were happy about the concepts. and. Also, what we found out was uh, that really and also the big projects uh, benefit from, from the, the automated gating. So we had, we had in, uh, Zool in use already for, for the, some smaller projects already more than four years ago, so we know how gating works and these smaller projects also benefit dramatically from gating. But this is, was also the proof that this works also for, for bigger projects. So the bad thing was that most P and most uh, developers were C++ developers also uh, in, in our automotive domain. And uh, Ansible comes from the DevOps world, which is completely different to, to them. So the, uh, it was a relatively steep learning curve for, uh, for the users to get used to the new concepts. Yeah. And, uh, just I want just to share some uh, two uh, citations. So, one one developer said, "Never again have the project get broken by a developer. Never ever." So that's he's very exciting, uh, excited of of the gating, which is really the most important thing in Zool. 
And another developer said some weeks after the migration, it just feels right. So this is uh, our user feedback, which I'm very proud of because they were very skeptical before that. Yeah. So, thank you very much for your attention, and are there any questions? Hi, um, one question. Um, how, how do you make your um, deployment outcome uh, compliant at the end? So, means when your different teams are deploying the application, how you make sure that the outcome uh, at the end, what you are deploying, that is 100% compliant to the company rules? Uh, what do you mean with deploying? So in, in, in our automotive domain, so we're developing software which is not directly deployed to a car, but uh, it is tested and released and checked with uh, if, if there's, for example, a Jira ticket linked to, and uh, yeah, then it's, uh, and then we have a release process where the, there's, uh, the, re the artifacts are signed and so on, and there is a package created which then can be flashed to, uh, to the car. So we don't have this full chain yet to be, to uh, deploy the artifacts directly from CI into car. So we're not there yet, but, uh, yeah, so automotive industry uh, moves slowly in ra with regards to that. All right, thanks. Yeah, I have two quick questions. Uh, what if uh, I run Kubernetes without OpenStack? Can I still use uh, Zool for CI CD? Um, you can still use Zool. So we're running Zool on, on Kubernetes, which is not the common case. So because we're just doing that with uh, for. Uh, for uh, availability reasons, and uh, if you still have the choice to uh, run Zool just on bare metal or on VMs or on your own Kubernetes, um, and you also don't need an OpenStack cloud, for example, for Zool to work, so Notepool also can work with static nodes. And just, I think, one or two weeks ago, there was also a patch landing in Notepool that also um, added Kubernetes support for getting the build resources. There's still some, some, some small piece missing in Zool to use that, really. Uh, but uh, Zool will also support soon um, plain uh, container workloads, for example. Okay, thanks. And my second question is about Ansible, because I didn't see that in your diagram. So where does it actually come into the game? Um, so Ansible is the language in which you describe your jobs. So um, this is just, uh, so Zool has two parts of, of the configuration. One is the, the jobs, which is a custom specific language based on YAML. Um, and the second is what are the jobs doing? And that is just plain Ansible. And uh, this is all, yeah, and this was, uh, well, new to most of our users. I have a question. Uh, so how do I install Zool? Is there a standard procedure or documentation available? I don't see anything Sorry. obvious. Uh, um, there is a documentation available on zoolci.org. Um, if there's something missing, we're still open for contributions, but uh, just uh, one, uh, two weeks ago, there was a new getting started guide uh, added, which is based on, on Docker Compose to try it out. So but our open, OpenShift uh, specific deployment is currently uh, specific to our deployment. So uh, to deploy on a private cloud, every documentation is available? Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, two questions actually. So I, I work for a company that is relatively small uh, in comparison to BW, we're about 50-ish developers. Um, you mentioned in one of your slides that you had kind of a central CI team with dedicated people. We did the same, it didn't work very well for us because the requirements from all the different teams were just different enough 
that the CI team had a really hard time providing something that is you know, useful to everyone. So I guess the question is how big is that team in your case in comparison to the others? And then question number two, how do you you know, keep them from going insane. Okay, so uh, with that regards, we have several layers of teams, uh, actually. So we have, we have a handful of, of, of people who are running the infrastructure part of, of Zool, and uh, Zool is very generic, so you, you don't have to do many customizations to, to Zool to drive, so, so Zool is that generic then you ca uh, that you can drive almost every workflow without customizing Zool, just with job configuration. So that, uh, that lowers the barrier for that. Um, and the second layer is that we have some, uh, in, in each bigger project, we have a, a, a CI community, a, a project internal CI community, for example, uh, which are people who got to know Zool in, in, in detail and they they're knowing how Zool works because for the average developer it's still difficult to to manage uh, that complexity. But uh, that's our two-layer approach. So we have uh, we have a central uh, team that uh, that drives the infrastructure that also maintains the CI library, um, and we have the second layer where we also have centralized knowledge in in the projects themselves. Hi, uh, thanks for a great presentation. Um, I'm coming from the automotive space too, and uh, you said you do this uh, OEM stuff and, and different uh, vendors and different other um, uh, T1 and T2 uh, OEMs via multi tenancy in Zool. So you have one big instance for Zool. Um, are your lawyers okay with that? Because on our side, some developers even have three different notebooks for different code bases. And uh, it would be crazy, crazy great for us if we could uh, consolidate and do it to uh, easy multi-tenancy in a tool. Yeah, so, so what we're doing is we have also uh, most of the code in, within our GitHub and there also the access rights are just separated from each other so that the, uh, the developers of project A don't have access to the project B. So. Uh, essentially the, the OEM, uh, the, the supplier members of these development teams. And uh, with Zool we have just a multi-tenancy where uh, we can just divide these projects and uh, they don't share then any job configuration except uh, Zool jobs for example and the CI library which is then injected to all of the tenants. Okay, thanks. Uh, actually I have a follow-up question regarding the multi-tenancy. Uh, you mentioned that you separate the rights uh, on the GitHub part. However, you still need to upload the logs somewhere. So how do you control the access to the logs, which will probably contain a lot of stuff from the jobs itself? That is a good question. So we're uploading the t logs also prefixed with tenant and we're just doing uh, path-based uh, authentication and authorization. Could you say a bit why automated gating is such a game changer for you guys? So automated gating is a game changer bef uh, because um, you can scale the development teams themselves. So uh, back back in time where we had, a, for example, a project which didn't have automated gating yet, so uh, they but still they wanted to test their current state uh, of of the so they don't didn't want to, to land patches and see the build is red, so you need to test before you merge it. And then uh, the problem is either you do it automatically, yeah, with Jenkins, and then you're stick, stuck to serialized uh, gating, um, which is a problem if your jobs take longer, yeah, then for example, if, if your job take uh, one hour, for example, then you can just land 24 patches per day, and that's not much. Um, what Zool does is, uh, it does, uh, it parallelizes this process in a speculative manner, so each, uh, each change is then tested together with the speculative, uh, in, in a speculative future state, together with all uh, patches that, land, uh, that 
are queued up uh, in front of that. Um, and if all go green, then they all are just merged. And this, can, uh, this uh, greatly improves uh, the gating uh, performance. But back, back in time where we didn't have any gating, so there was a procedure, so we, we did a rebase, and you, you, did, uh, you, you trigger the, the, pet, uh, the, uh, the jobs. If the jobs are green, then you hit the merge button, but then all other changes which are already there are invalid because there are jobs, well, you don't know if they still work, so you, you rebase the next patch set, and that's just work you don't have to do. So that's why uh, automated gating is really a game changer in that regard. Uh, have you included calibration of your ECUs in the CI system, or is that later? Calibration? Uh, often the ECUs are uncalibrated, and then you add some data sets afterwards. Um, Okay, so I'm, I'm not, not that deep into the ECU projects themselves, so I'm, I'm the person running the CI system, and usually I don't care what they're doing with that, so, um, but I know that they're, they have test racks and they deploy uh, their, their code on, on that, and I guess they're also using uh, test data. Any further questions? Okay, then thank you very much. <laughs>